Welcome to Home Cinema and Tech Review. In this video, I'll be reviewing Wombo T2 Max New. This is their latest product and Wombo told me they wanted to send me a projector for a review. I told them which model and they said T2 Max got beefed up and now it is T2 Max New. I said what's new about it and they told me it's 450 ansu lumen instead of 250 old model and I got excited and then when they told me it has autofocus then I said yes this is worth a try and this is worth a review so even though this video is sponsored you'll be seeing deeply what this device can deliver as my opinions are my own as always and it, as it should be so you'll get clear idea what this beast can do when I say beast this has not just power upgrade but in every way this is something different and I'm quite impressed for its size and what it can deliver how practical it is this video is not going to be short by the way because it has many functions I want to show you every one of them so let's just start with the specs this is 450 ansu lumens instead of one, uh, 250 the old model 80% of power output increase we got autofocus so it has the autofocus you can move back and forth and it everything it does for you and then it has also auto correction so the keystoning is not issue anymore basically if you don't move it like extreme but close movements it just makes the auto correction that makes everything easy moving back and forth and changing the screen size small projector like this so we don't have to fiddle and to find out the true focus anymore they upgraded the glass and also they upgrade the speakers and the acoustic design of the speakers there is a 300 cc probably kind of like a space for the speakers so we got better bass better acoustics you'll be experiencing every upgrade in this video this video will be uh, from a couple of parts first part you'll be seeing POV style my personal view uh, of experience in a dimly lit room because this is upgraded so the old T2 Max was a dark room projector because it has 250 ansu lumens right now when we get 450 you can use this device in a dimly lit room so we will be experiencing in that in a in a way that you'll be seeing the menu smart functions and everything on this device that can deliver you and the second part you'll be seeing in a blackout room fully dark room where this device truly shines and how big and how small uh, size differences on the screen what take uh, what this can deliver to you and which sizes and after that you'll be hearing the audio quality from one meter like you should probably standing away from the projector regular ear base when you put your uh, earbuds your headphones you'll uh, get the audio clearance of this device and then in the end I will share my conclusions and what I think about this device let's just start diving to T2 Max new and what this beefed up version of T2 Max can deliver to us welcome to second part of the video in this part as you can see room is lit semi lit we got one light at the corner and one light at the back of our tv unit and as usual behind the couch there is another light so it is quite closer to the screen than my optimo uhd 35 this is probably 1.2 meters and this means this is way more short throw than my regular expensive much more expensive projector so I just want to show this video in this light setup I've increased my actual setting because I want to show you true experience I can see my hands see my game pads when I play game you know with the console so I can see what I eat I can see what's on the couch so I can really use it like a TV style usage this is what it is and right now we got 120 inch so this projector normally for my perspective ideal for around 100 inch and 75 or 85 to 100 inch ratio if you go 120 you should definitely darken your room like a black room but right now as you can see also my corridor lights are open so the room is semi lit or dimly lit and also we are seeing a very good picture quality and I will come in a minute 
we will go shorter uh, and smaller in the meantime so we got settings of in this setup i will be quite fast network settings wireless the projector settings for the visual and input source we don't have too much like hdmi and usb media center for the files software update this is a new projector memory clean is for cleaning the cache this is an android device like a dongle it is a quite smart thing options we will go into that language we got huge amount of options as you can see and boot we got a re uh, you know restart time to time and bluetooth since uh, it's the issue of boot if i put the close button and put it back like it opens quite fast since it's a led projector this is one of the advantages comparing to my uh, optoma boot projector and apps if you go to the apps you see the apps for youtube play store and iMirror and MX player that I installed and you can also see the Netflix and input level when it goes to the input picture quality which is one of the most important things I made for myself this is my personal settings the brightness is instead of 50 55 contrast is 55 saturation is 60 instead of 50 and sharpness is 86 since we're going big like 120 inch uh, we definitely need to improve the sharpness for any kind of full hd projectors because most of the time full hd is up to 100 inch if you go above and if you've seen 4k projectors you want a little bit of more sharpness so before passing out all the settings we got sound settings which is important we got good speakers and also we got sound style choice as you can see so it's important to give the user these settings i've never uh, seen for small projectors like this and equalizer detail which is quite important if you're going to be tweaking your audio levels and if you know what you're doing so the timer is about before you sleep if you want to use this in the bedroom it's definitely a keeper before the sleep and you go to sleep while watching a movie screensaver is the picture that you've seen when the source is not giving anything and reset so came to the menu and i want to keep it fast we got the music settings as you can see so in the music settings we got a huge amount of alternatives and in the video menu we got youtube and i will go here and as you can see the other video channels and the video uh, contents we are seeing but when, it's come, when it comes down to the first menu, we see you, YouTube always. When I go to the apps, this is the basic part and most of us will probably use. We got App Store, App, 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 App Store and Bluetooth speaker connection. Miracast for Android devices, which I've used my S22 Ultra Samsung and connection was perfect. iMirror is for if you have an iPhone, AirPlay compatible devices. And eShare is for probably laptops and stuff if you are in the same network level, which right now is my network name. So if you go for eShare app and you go from there, you can share your screen and you can use it like a uh, mirroring um, extended screen. And when we come to the home, we got the most important part, YouTube, Spotify, Facebook, Amazon Prime. There is no time to show every one of it. Tune in, Disney Plus. We got Chrome browser. This is one of the things that I like. If you install uh, you, you know, a keyboard and mouse to this device from the USB port, like a wireless kit, you can use it as a browser and remote TV kind of smart TV, smart PC, small PC, BBC News. And we got HBO Max disney plus and sony pictures here we have nearly everything and the search is the first menu so i want to show you the quality which is the one of the most important parts of this projector don't forget about uh, when you're watching the quality right now we are shooting in a, even though it's dim lit room it is still a lit room so consider this is a 450 power lumen power of projector you need to respect what it does because lg 4k yeah it's the thing that i want to check and we will take a look at the lg demos this is one of the perfect ways to showing the picture quality 
So reason that I shoot it like this, I can see my hands, my remote, my game pads, I can see all the room. So that's why it is important. Don't forget about this. If I close every light, the contrast will be extremely higher. But I want to focus on sharpness. Boy, this image is sharp. Also, of course, I know I increased the sharpness to six, uh, 86, but this is a sharp image. And this is 120 inch. This is a little large for the full HD, but still, just look at these bubbles. And I will, in a couple of minutes, I will get closer with the projector and you'll see the quality in the 90 inch because I think the sweet spot is 90 to 100 inch for full HD projectors. So this is definitely a usable projector for daily basis. And if you go smaller than 120 inch like this, you can definitely use it as a TV with a TV dongle like I do with my Optoma. So I could use this projector for daily basis for daily use. And when I want a cinema experience like extreme contrast, then I can maybe turn other projectors, turn to other projectors with brighter levels. But definitely this is, I, I probably, I watched three or four Netflix series from this projector. And I didn't realize that I didn't want to go to my expensive 4K projector. It was enough for me for the size of 100, 120 inch. So it's a little difficult to, for me to explain or un, uh, understand how sharp it is. And since this is a budget projector, I know there are some things that are missing like an HDR and extreme brightness levels. By the way, I will take uh, with you a little back and show you again. You see every drop and every sparkle in this video but there is a cost to that because I increased the uh, sharpness we see edge glow but this is basically a no show when it comes down to the video so let's go back and another YouTube video which we will watch this is about colors and I will just take a look I will get the projector closer and I will get it close. Yep. It is auto focusing so easy. So right now I've also added like a two of my hands, which means it's about 50 centimeters more away from the wall than before. And it is so easy to use it. So let's just play it. I'm not changing any camera settings. The brightness is extreme right now, considering before. So it is ideal to watch it. Right now the TV console is 2 meters and the screen is probably 2 meters, 10 centimeters ish. So it means this is about 100 inch sweet spot. So 92 inch is about probably 2 meters length. So this is 90 to 100 inch space. And if you go even 90 inch, you will definitely can, you can use it like a TV. Let's just, just open up another video. This is, by the way, a commercial, local commercial. Just skip this thing. And as you can see, I've uh, add extra sharpness. That's why it is a little extra sharpened. But definitely when I sit back, I can watch this without disturb disturbing my visual. And I can even go softer than this. Let's just go forward a little bit to find out a little bit more about different visuals. I wasn't expecting this much of a sharpness. Not just after what I increased, but for a small size and um, smaller than palm of my hand and I know this projector has a bigger glass uh, than the others in the market but still I wasn't expecting this much of a sharpness uh, let's just stop this
take a look at this. Yes, maybe stopping is not ideal, but it is sharp. So you can watch any kind of movie in a quite sharp way. I think I've covered nearly all the settings uh, in this part. The only thing that I didn't do is open up a Netflix or Amazon Prime. Let's just open up the Netflix and finish this because it's going to take huge amount of time to use every kind of app. By the way, I will later on test in detail and write it down in the screen. And some of the products have license for Netflix uh, as a mobile license. I will check the license later on and let you know. And let's just open up a movie scene. By the way, the menu is quite fast, as you can see. This is an Android device. Let's just open up the suits. A little bit of old, but still gold. <laughs> yep. So if I play it back, I don't want to get caught of any kind of copyright issue, but I think the quality is quite good. But I will also just check, like I told you, uh, the license and the quality uh, of the Netflix. But everything seems working fine. The only thing that could be told about this uh, menu is when you go to the apps, if you want to cast, it's not going to cast like a TV directly. You have to choose Miracast or iMirror. If you have an uh, Apple, you go to the iMirror. And if you have Android, you go to the Miracast. Uh, some might think this is a kind of two-step procedure and little difficult than the regular TV menus. But I can assure you that my, uh, my last projector of Full HD LED one LG HF60 LS didn't have eye mirroring like I couldn't manage to mirror from iPhone. So they were on not also supporting any app like a Google Play since it has a TV in, uh, operation system. So I couldn't find a way. But right now you have the option to mirror from Apple or Android without any problem. I think it's good to have. And having a lot of apps and which and maybe the last thing that we need to mention here, having a Google Play is one of the best things in this setup. If you're not going to use extra dongle, right now I have my dongles and I have my multimedia specs, which I will teach in the later videos. But if you don't want to use anything, just directly using a projector, which is the smartest and easiest way to do, having this can give you the way of installing Kodi and also some file managers, extra file managers and being connect kind of stuff. Many things or IPTV applications or VLC player or Plex. If you have a Plex server, like a media server you have created in the same uh, home network, then you can play your movies from your Plex server. So this gives you the opportunity to have more options with the Google Play. And I think it's a good thing to have. Other than this, you can probably throw out any app to this device. But when you do beef it up too much, you can clean it with the settings and the memory clean menu. I think I've covered this menu and the picture quality. And if I got closer, like I told you in early in the video, let's take a look. It is even getting better. Right now the TV is 65 inch at the below you can see. So this is around 85, 80, 85. And if you have a small room, kids room, bedroom, this is definitely perfect thing. And even if you have a dedicated cinema room, you can get away and use this. It's difficult to explain, really. I wasn't expecting this sharpness and brightness. So this is not the most advanced version from the Wambu. They have also T6 series, much more brighter. But for the 450, this is more than enough. Yeah, at least uh, the five or six projectors that I reviewed lately, but I haven't published them. And the optical quality, sound quality, 
and the picture quality is very impressive. By the way, if you turn it, I'll try this, as you can see. It focused and if I go to the settings, I will show you something another. Projector settings. Horizontal calibration, okay. Four point trapezoid. I can really make any kind of corner adjustment with a four corner application. So I'm not recommending just projecting from awfully different difficult angles, but just giving you the idea you can correct any kind of visual and it can have focus. Right now it's just 40 degree or 30 degree kind of angle and it's not ideal, but you can really use this projector in any way and it's easy. So that's what I like about it. I hope you enjoyed this part. And let's finish the video with the other parts. This is the video recording from 3 meter and 3 meter, 10 centimeters, 310 centimeters of distance. One bull, T2 max. Picture mode was standard and we didn't change anything at all. No extra sharpness. Sharpness is 10. 
In this part of the video, we'll be testing the new upgraded sound quality. And right now, the distance between microphone and the projector is about 100 centimeters, which is quite likely where you'll be placing yourself, your ears. And the channel we are going to be using, breaking copyright, royalty-free music. So we will start with some ambient piano, since because this is a small unit. We want to know acoustics. Let's try another music. Upbeats and other ones will be come later. Sounds is not dis, uh, distorting, so I think it's a good good thing for its size. So try another video.
I think overall we covered a lot of audio quality tests. Uh, in my opinion, in this part of the video, all I can tell you it's it's not a bo big boombox, but for its size, very compact, small size, this projector delivers quite crisp, clear uh, treble sound, and also tr trying its best for its size to give you the bass. And it was m better, in my opinion for the uh, audio of Calm because it's an acoustic uh, and like a calm ambient music. So for this type of music and instrumental uh, music, it is quite good. But when it comes down to the bass, it's just about the size of the projector. For its size, I think it gets the tick out of the way and it is successful. Finally, we have come to conclusion part. In this part, we'll be talking about Wombo T2 Max, is it worth to have, and what's the positives, what's the negatives. Before I say all those things about the projector, if you watch this video until the end, please hit the like and subscribe button. These are important and if you comment, your comments are pretty valuable and in the next videos, what I, what you should be seeing in this channel, you can direct the channel. This is my hobby channel. But before any conclusions, I'd like to show you, this was my own purchase. This is T2R Max and we have been using this in the office. So we know what's the 250 ANSI lumens and what the 450 ANSI lumens of power, what's the difference between them? So I can compare truly. Wambu didn't know about this. I had a couple of projectors. I have a lot of projectors at studio, at home, at office. We have everywhere filled with projectors. We love cinema environment. So let's just start with what's the positive about the T2 Max next generation, new version. 450 ANSI lumen is quite a big upgrade and that makes this device easily usable in a dimly lit or mid-level lit room. So you can use it in a daily basis much more easily than the standard model. And the one other thing, you don't have to fiddle with the focus anymore, so autofocus is advantage. Auto keystone makes everything easier. Of course, if you don't push it like a 45, 50 degree angle, some extreme 60 degree, then the mm, product might not be able to do it. But if you do it like a slight movement, because most of the time when you put it somewhere, you might not be exactly in a couple of degrees, but if you move it 10 to 15 degrees, it can automatically understand and correct it for you. That makes everything life easy when it comes down to focusing and adjusting screen. We do also have four keystone, uh, four point keystone, which I shown you in the video. So you definitely can manually adjust the screen. And digital zoom is quite advantage. So you can just put it in and out if you don't have the option to move the projector by yourself. And if you don't have the tripod for at the moment, you just put it on a place. That's a plus. And also we have speaker upgrade. Speaker upgrade is kind of like a good thing. We have better bass and better acoustics inside, but still 
uh, I will come in that uh, subject in the later of the video but we get better sound out of it that's for sure and the brightness level definitely the biggest upgrade the design was quite good and they didn't change the outer look of the device keeping everything in the same size I think it's a difficult object to uh, achieve and they made it and they made it quieter that's one of the biggest part because if you improve the lead power output lead will heat more probably right and the heat level goes up so fan noise will go up but they down uh, downsize like decrease the fan noise that's a plus for me so these are the positives but what's the negative about this device let's just be objective about it and the thing that I like about the Android it's with the Google Play and you can install the apps that you like it's smart but I would like to use my own dongle that's my opinion because my own dongle is a 4k I can use uh, my dongle to play 4k YouTube videos this device use only full HD YouTube videos so if you're like edgy uh, on the home cinema like me you would go for the dongle side but you're not missing anything out by the way we can also add a positive side to the fully android specs this is because you can cast to this device from android to ios and also from your laptop you can cast from any device you can also use 4k signals that is a plus you can put it in a 4k signals it just goes like a full hd so you can connect your consoles like my xbox one x and you've seen some 4k game footages i played it from the youtube channels but you will get the similar experience and let's go to the downsides again this might not be for a gamer's projector because of the uh, screen delay like a, a response time but you can play casual games like uh, racing games or f fighting games but fps games and some sort of uh, pretty much action games on a level on the edge if you're a competitive game player this is not the projector for you this is like a home cinema setup and watching tvs and uh, tv series or regular news uh, as a device this is like a comfortable home home cinema setup projector like if you're focusing on gaming you might need a extra buck in your pocket so for the price it is easily be suitable for gaming as well but casual gamers other than that what's the downside of it uh, probably the adapter cable is kind of like short for me because to projector to adapter cable is less than probably let's just say one meter 1.2 uh, meter that makes it difficult when you go on a tripod if you put it on a high level the adapter just brings this device movable so you always need to put it on a, some sort of a close place to the ground or adapter to close to this device so i want bamboo to extend the cable but that's not a minor that's not a, even a problem but if i say anything about the minus or something negative that could be it if bamboo upgrades i'm glad to hear or see that other than that what's what could be negative of this device after the 100 inch of size image gets softer but that's not a negative of this device but any full hd projector because our eyes are used to get tvs with the 4k resolution so if you just enlarge too much of a full hd visual you'll definitely get softer but this device shines around 85 to 100 inch above the 100 you have to accept some of the sharpness loss and also some of the light loss because when you get big also the contrast and the light goes down a little bit that's a physical truth but that's not actually negative but thing to know about it and for the speaker uh, you probably need an extra speaker if you're watching 100 inch of uh, projection at my back you've seen my Grundig uh, soundbar you could upgrade with a soundbar or boombox portable bluetooth device you can connect anything to a bluetooth or with the 3.5 millimeter jack that's easy to connection and what you should be looking out for there is not much of a negative out here in this device because i couldn't find one in one week and probably won't find one uh, in uh, in later days uh, the thing that i would like to see is a better android application uh, because my dongle has 4k support and to do that you need uh, more expensive 
a CPU or GPU power and uh, better uh, RAM uh, support and that makes it probably higher value so they wanted to keep the price performance level that's why it is a, it has a place if you upgrade the device as a T4 or T6 series you definitely get better projector but this is a price performance level of projector so we have to accept some of these facts so there is nothing actually negative about this projector even though I try to find out I couldn't so if you find it on a good price level around your country wherever you buy you won't regret the money that you spent to this device definitely for easy to use but I will be using for the rest of its life at my home probably with my dongle because I like my dongle too much or I connect my uh, probably Samsung S22 Ultra phone to it to watch the content out of it and for play 4k YouTube videos uh, as well to get the best out of it but other than that there's no issue and um, the thing that you want to think about when you are using behind me you're seeing gray screen is it worth your money you should be thinking about ambient light rejection projection screens and uh, they are quite cheap there are quite cheaper versions like 25 to 30 dollar which you might be thinking purchasing with this projector side by side if you do that you might be using your projector with the lid room because you won't be affected in the ambient light positioning don't waste any time after this video just watch the gray screen is it worth your money ambient light rejection cheapest screen videos under the description of this video because it will improve a lot for this projector you can use it in a semi-lit or normally lit room environment with those screens and if you're thinking about using as a tv for a daily basis if you don't have any hardware like me as a tv you can add a tv uh, converter like a tv unit a small satellite receiver you can use it as a tv but i recommend you to use it around 85 inch with the ambient light rejection then you get really tv experience and if you go big like 100 inch you definitely close you have to close some lights even though you use this type of screen but if you're going to be using on a white wall pretty white wall I recommend close the lights as much as possible and get dark room as much as possible this truly shines on a fully dark room but other than that I've used it and you watched it in this video in dimly lit room with the LEDs around you definitely don't worry about the picture quality and you have fun with this projector my overall conclusion is it worth your money and if you find the uh, good price around the internet wherever you live this definitely worth it is it worth the upgrade from t2 max to t2 max new well it depends on how much money do you have what you want to achieve because the sharpness level is quite close comparing the t2 max and t2 max new generation lens is good both of them so if you want to upgrade if you have the budget you could go to t6 series because they have 600 ans lumens of power that might they might be your better option but if you want to normally upgrade and if you can sell your regular t2 max to your friend with a good money you could definitely think of these devices other than that if you're going to purchase a new small projector this should be in your radar at least you have to have the fav favorite it and follow the price around when you want to uh, buy it like a notification comes with a discount just jump on it you can buy this device without any hesitations the only downside I remember right now that I felt that it doesn't have the flip uh, settings it might be because of the autofocus but if the bamboo adds a flip settings to this device you can mount it on a ceiling i know this is not a ceiling type of projector this is easy portable and you know you can put it all around but when i want to you know apply it on a ceiling i could be using like this if there is a flip function right now it doesn't and also i have mirror trick i've tried it this brightness with a single mirror it looks like an ultra short throw projector later on I will create another video but if it had that function I would have shot the video with this projector but the only thing one of the things that missing could be flip function if anyway you want to put it on a ceiling but normally this device is not designed for ceiling use 
I believe I made my points clear and would I buy one? I would buy one if I want to achieve a cinema setup on a budget and if I want to use a full HD projector this might be your starting point and uh, if you haven't if you have any questions you can ask me at the comment section below I'll try to answer with my uh, best abilities but other than that if you have more budget you could be considering T6, T6R Max kind of like upgraded versions from the Wambu. I am quite happy with where things going in the LED projectors. These small devices are just improving every day. We know it with the Anchor. They are improving a lot with autofocus and some of them has batteries and it is good for the projection future. And I, will, I am also wondering where they will be upgrading to T2R Max, like where this thing can be going or are they going to go upgrade this or change the model names after the T2 Max new generation? I'm quite happy for the future and I'd like to see more of these small projectors in the future. But don't forget about it, if you want to buy a small projector in the future, you have to be careful of, of their focus levels. These devices are quite good because of their true glass lens. Uh, but if you go too budget, you don't get that. So before my earlier reviews, you've seen some of other projectors and I don't want to mention their names in this, but losing focus on the picture quality is important part of the projection and you don't want to hurt your eyes in the long term. So don't go too budget way. Try to find out a true sharp projector if you want to purchase. Uh, just save your money, purchase a decent one and T2 Max is a decent projector. That is the basic point of it. Like sharpness is good enough to use in every occasion. There are always a couple of downsides and there will be for the price, but those things are acceptable. So hope to see you in the next video. Bye from Home Cinema and Tech Review.